Okay, you know, well, first of all, what's good, y'all? Michael here today for another video. There's been a topic that people like, I've been getting a lot of comments on my last video, not the current one, the reaction video of the Trubisky is the future of our franchise. So I've gotten to many, you're right, you're wrong, whatever. So I'll go into it a lot. So you guys want to bash Trubisky, y'all want to say he's the worst quarterback in the great league. But what does that accomplish? What is Zach Wilson, the quarterback that you want to draft, is going to do for the Bears? Again, what is Zach Wilson going to do on the Bears? Like, you have to stop picking and choosing. Like, you can't root for somebody who you don't know who's going to be good. Like, you guys act like just because they do good at college means that they'll prosper. It it into the NFL like many quarterbacks do it and they wind up as buses you just look at Jameis just look at uh, Mariota just look at RG3 right now they were all good in college but they flopped in the NFL like you're acting like Trubisky is a Josh Rosen type of quarterback you're acting like he's Dwayne Haskins like that's how you're acting of the situation you want to be you don't want to see the success in Trubisky. Like, the only reason why you want a new quarterback is because you want to be vindicated on draft day when we took Trubisky. When we took him the second overall pick, you all you all thought, oh, we should have took Deshaun Watson. We should have took Mahomes. Okay. Let me tell you, how are they going to help the Bears? Like, you have to stop picking and choosing. Like, do the Bears have the, like, I'll give you something. The Bears have the playmakers. Like, you still have Robinson. You have Darna Mooney. You have Miller, who looks all right. Still got to work on the drops. Then you got then you got Jimmy Graham, who still may look not the same route runner he was, but he's still a great red zone option. And you got a young rookie, Cole Komet, who's still, who is getting developed in the off in the NFL, and he's looking – like a decent NFL, a, a decent tight end. And you have two very good running backs. Uh, Montgomery's all right, and Patterson's good, but he's only for gadgets. So my whole thing is, you, do they have the playmakers? Absolutely. Do they have the offensive line? Mm, I wouldn't say they 100% do, but they need to get a little bit of work on the offensive line. But if you look at the offensive personnel around the quarterback, would you say it's the best? I don't think so. Because when Matt Nagy came on the Bears, we all were rejoiced because he won Coach of the Year, his first ever year being on the Bears. And ever since then, he really hasn't done nothing to help this offense. Like, he doesn't run the ball. Well, he. While he was calling plays before he gave up play calling, he doesn't like to run the ball. He doesn't fix the blocking. Like, he doesn't fix, like, he doesn't know how to use Trubisky. Like, like he's trying to get Trubisky to pad up his stats. Like, he's trying to make Trubisky look like Mahomes right now in Kansas City. Like, it's Matt Nagy. Until you realize Matt Nagy, until you realize that nothing's going to get changed around the Bears. And it's – my whole thing is with Mitchell Trubisky is if you want to criticize him for doing one thing, going out of bounds and not throwing the ball away and taking a loss, I can agree with that. Yeah, Trubisky should have not done that, but you can't criticize him until he has the right staff around him. Okay, but Michael, he had a bad year in 2019. Okay, 17 touchdowns and only 10 interceptions. Better than his rookie year being seven touchdowns and seven interceptions. So you're acting like it was his, he, he, it was his worst season. He still went 500 with Matt Nagy. 
And guess what? He was thrown to undrafted tight ends because Burton and Shaheem were were not there. All right. And Gabriel was out. And pretty much the offensive line was garbage because Kyle Long was out for the entire season. Well, he's been hurt. It's not really a shocker. And they couldn't, and the play card didn't know how to run the ball that year. Okay. Like, you have to stop picking and choosing. Like, don't just pick one man and say, we need a tank for Zach Wilson. Like, and plus, why are you looking at free agents? For example, Sam Donald. What is Sam Donald going to do? And you give him every break. Oh, if he leaves the Jets, he's a top 15 quarterback. Where is that same energy with Trubisky? Where is that same energy with Mitchell Trubisky? You see what I'm saying? Like, the only reason why you see Sam Donald is because you see Adam Gaze on the team and he's ruining the team. Adam Gaze. Matt Nagy is destroying the Chicago Bears, and it's all Trubisky's fault. Don't sit here and tell me Trubisky needs to go. Until you fix the current problem, every we're going to draft a quarterback every year, and it's the cycle with the Bears fans because maybe you wonder why quarterbacks on the Bears don't make it because the fans. All right. I can understand if Trubisky had Andy Reid and he like a perfect head coach and he still wasn't prospering. Then I would understand why you say that, but until you have, ha- until he has the right personnel, you can come and tell me he's not the guy, but don't come in and say he's not the guy. Like you act like Matt Nagy is a competent head coach. So let me guess. So Zach Wilson is on BYU. So he's going to go from having these top, these good offense and good management too. Like why do you, the Packers could legit go to the Super Bowl if they just added a receiver and added a linebacker, which they failed to do that. That's all the Packers needed to do. They look okay. They, they look all right now, but they are going to get clapped in the playoffs because their management group is atrocious with the Packers. And I think of the Bears, like, you, you took Jalen Johnson, who's been a phenomenal pick, by the way, and your next pick, you take an edge rusher who ain't even starting. <laughs> you could have got a lineman, you could have gotten a set, you could have gotten anybody, but you got a, an edge rusher who's not even starting. And then your second pick is a CB. I mean, it's all right. I guess Buster Screen ain't the answer. And you don't take Lyman until the seventh round. You see what I'm saying? Like, this management group is atrocious when it comes to dealing with the offensive line. It's all on defense, building around the defense. Did the defense fail? Yes, on Sunday. But they're still the best in the NFC North still. I mean, you can't sit here and tell me any defense in the NFC North looks better than the Bears. Because the NFC, because the Bears that legit have the best defense in that division. Tell me otherwise. Now, even if Trubisky does win out the season, I'm thinking Matt Nagy's getting fired. Because he... Because if you look at the possible facts, even if he's not calling plays, he's still technically the coach. And let me counter you with something. He may not be calling plays, but he's still the head coach. And he's still managing the players. Did you, did you know the Bears have seven points in the third quarter coming out of halftime? Technically 14 if you want to count the overturned touchdown, but either way, it sucks. So that just tells you who's the problem. Matt Nagy, like we are the worst third quarter team in the NFL right now. We can only score in the fourth quarter. 
All right. We barely, like, y- can the Bears win out? Yes. All right. We do play the Detroit Lions, who are in take mode. Could be a toilet bowl game. Then you have the Houston Texans, who who has their receiver suspended because he had a PED problem or a he was te- he was um no it wasn't covid it was he had PED violations and he's out for six games so, so the Houston Texans should be winnable then you have the Vikings who look like they they never have beaten Trubisky if you want to exempt his rookie season like he literally owns the Vikings but my whole thing is it's in Minnesota, so I'm hoping your biscuit can pull off something there. Then you have the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are in truck tank for Trevor duty. Then you have the Green Bay Packers, who possibly might bench their starters. So that will probably make us the sixth seed at best if Tampa Bay doesn't implode. Maybe the seventh seed, but you will have to pray. Pray. We face Seattle because Seattle's defense is horrible. Like, did like when you have no defense, you can lose to anybody. Like, it doesn't matter if you have a great offense that can put up points, but if you don't stop your other opponent opponent from scoring, you can legit lose. I mean, that's a great thing about having a good offense; is they put up points. But if you don't have it, but if you can't stop your other opponent from putting up points, then you can lose. All right, anyway, now that I got my soft rant out of the way, I want to know something. Even if the Bears have a pick or a draft pick, we're not taking a quarterback. Even if we do, we're going to trade the quarterback to get three first-round picks, maybe two. I mean, we are going to take those two-round picks because we need a lot of help on this offense. And as far as I'm concerned, Zach Wilson ain't going to plug them because there is holes in this offense that need to get cleaned up during the offseason. All right, anyway, that's it. That's all. Subscribe. As always, my name is Michael, and I approve this message.